All right, who is number one? Yes. 13, uh, wait, uh, can you tell me the page number? Oh yeah, well, what uh, year again? Okay, just a minute. We have spring 15, I'm trying to find that one. Uh, here we go. Uh, okay, what number? 13, uh, this is page 72. Uh, it's like a long answer problem, basically. I think you're looking at this one right here. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Uh, like setup, is that what you're looking for? Okay. Uh, once you see semi-permeable membrane, uh, the first thing I think is osmotic pressure. Okay. Uh, we've got separates two aqueous solutions, solution A, and solution A is uh, glucose, solution B is water. Uh, there would be a net flow of water uh, until equilibrium starts. What pressure uh, would we have to apply? Okay, so pi equals I M R T. Okay. Uh, so pressure is what we want to know. Uh, temperature, I think we have, that's 25, so you add 273 to that, Kelvin. R, anybody remember which one we use, 0.08 or the 8? Yeah, because this 0.08, because this is, uh, what's it called, uh, the ideal gas law, essentially. Sorry, it's good. Kelvin? Okay, uh, the, uh, let's do I next. I would be what? One, because it's glucose, so it's not ionic. Uh, so any car, uh, molecular compound, no metals, organic, biological entity usually, unless it has an ion, anything with no metals, it's one. Okay. M, I think it's given. 0.165, 56, something like that. <laughs> Multiply. Okay, number two. I'll try to go fast so I get as many of you as possible. Who's number two? Yes. Page 55, just a second. 55, uh, what number? 15, right here. Okay. There we go. All right. Uh, we've got hydro, what the heck do I do with this thing? What is that? Or how do I find it? Yeah, if it's something weird, remember, weird, look here. Okay. Uh, oh, it's the one I was working with earlier, HN3. Perfect. Okay, so we've got HN3. This is 0 0.10 molar. Uh, this is 50 milliliters. And that's, uh, we're adding NaOH, 0 0.10 molar. 10, oh, I guess you wanted to set up. I didn't even ask you. Okay. All right, find the pH. Okay, let's move this out of the way. Ooh, I'm kind of a little off-centered here. Okay, uh, so for this one, uh, we've got an acid and a base. Let's write the reaction, see what happens. We've got N3 minus, the acid loses a proton, the base gains a proton, and there's a random sodium. I didn't even have to write it, it's a spectator ion. Okay? Uh, we've got we've none of this stuff initially, ignore water. So for the start, I've got this. Okay, what is, uh, what, is the K large or small? Large, how did you know that? You got a strong base here. This is going to go forward approximately 100%. Before I even attempt this kind of problem, I need a zero on the unfavored side, which is the left-hand side. Is that okay? So I'm going to re react these two. Notice they're of different volumes this and this, so I do need to account for that. 
I, the easiest way to account for that is just to find the moles of each. So let's do that. Uh, 0.1 molar, time, multiplying these two things together, times 50 uh, milliliters, that's what, 5 millimoles? And 0.1 times 10, that's 1 millimole. Uh, 0, 0, etc. Okay, now I'm going to do my stoichiometry. I'm going to find the smallest number and subtract it off. And add it to the other side. Is that okay? So 4, 0, 1, 1. Now what the heck is this thing? Anybody? I've got a, a weak acid and it's conjugate. It's a buffer. I've just made a buffer. Okay. This is, remember when we did, is this a buffer sort of stuff? This is one of those, except there's math involved. The base, uh, here it's one-fifth the moles, a millimoles of it. Totally fine. That still works. So this is going to generate a buffer. So you go pH equals pK plus the log of the base over the acid. Remember, this is the negative log. We even looked up this number as 1.9 times 10 to minus 5. We did that a little earlier. The base is that one. The acid uh, is that one. By the way, do I need to change this back to uh, molarity? I don't. Why not? It's a ratio and the volumes, they're both volumes in the denominator. It would be, what would be the volume in the denominator if I put it there? 60, yeah, 50 plus 10, 60. You don't need it though, but if you wanted to know. Cool? There you go. Is that semi okay? Yeah. Three. Yes. I'm flipping to page 93 right now. Number 12, the radiator, okay. A setup again, is that the, just a generic setup? Yeah, okay. All right, uh, here I see freezing point, I see KF, I'm automatically thinking uh, colligative properties again. So I'm thinking the delta T equals IKM. Let's see what they want to find. Uh, how much ethylene glycol do you need? So this is the harder version. It's not asking you for molality. It's asking you for uh, an amount, which is inside of molality. So first solve for molality, and then get to whatever you want. Okay. So M equals delta T over IK. Delta T. Oh, oh, huh? Oh, yeah, oh. There okay, we go. Uh, delta T. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. What is delta T? I'm comparing 51 degrees C to what number? Zero. Why zero? Yeah, that's the solvent, which is water. So compare the water goes from zero to minus 51. So I've got a delta T of 51. What's I? Okay, I'll do the easy one, K. You do the hard stuff. What's I here for ethylene glycol? One. Yeah, it's again, no metals. Okay, so you calculate that stuff. That's the first part. Now the hard part. The answer to that is going to be in molality, which is moles per kilogram. It's not really the hard part, it's just the next part. Okay. Now, how much ethylene glycol do you need? Remember, this is, I'll put EG for ethylene glycol, and this is the water, the solvent. So it's solute over solvent when it's molality. So you're going to take the then, oh, oh, sorry, I'm really like crazy today. Okay, it's because I really want to post on Twitter. Okay, 
So this, I'm going to multiply by the 500 grams and then change this to 1,000 grams per kilogram. So that gets rid of the water and now I have in moles the ethylene glycol. I need one more step to get the mass, which I believe is what they are asking for. Let me find, I lost it. Yeah, you're going to multiply by the molar mass of ethylene glycol. Cool. Okay, you were three, four. Oh, there you are. I didn't know where the voice was coming from. 54. Number six. Oh, okay. This happened to me when I was a student. Okay, you are a chemistry major, of course. Uh, you put an uncovered cup of water in the refrigerator. The water is found frozen, even though the refrigerator temperature is four degrees. Kind of weird. You don't expect water to freeze. Your friend, some loser, suggests that the refrigerator is leaking coolant fluid into the water. As a result, the water coolant solution underwent a freezing point depression. Clearly, the properties. So they took 2A or 2B, they didn't kind of know something, according to the concept of collision properties. This explains why the, the uncovered cup of water froze. Is your friend correct? So what your friend is saying, this is in the refrigerator, there's water. Drip, 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 uh, like fluid, coolant fluid uh, dripped into the water. Now you have a mixture, it freezes even though it's not the freezing point. Does colligative properties explain this? It does not. Why not? So no, they're a loser. They're not a chemistry major. No, it's okay. If you're not a chemistry major, it's okay. Okay. That's right. The freezing point should have went down. Yeah. So even more, it wouldn't have frozen. Does that make sense? The freezing point might have been negative four or something. Something else is going on. In our case, it's because the water was left under the, the fan that blows the cold air in. So it froze. Yeah. Okay, that's why. Okay, cool. But this is what my friend suggested. Okay, uh, next. Four or five? Yes. Great. Over 30, page 68. 68, page 68. Number 13, uh, this one right here? Yeah. Okay, uh, set up again would be helpful? Yeah. yeah, okay, let's do that. I'm going to take this reaction, uh, I'm going to write down both of these reactions. Okay, this is a pretty classic this style question. Uh, I, I have to write it down before I tell you what style it is. You'll see this on not every exam, but you see it here and there. So here's one of the reactions that was written on the page. I was super nice and gave you the Ka value to this, though it's on the back of the exam. Also, there's this reaction written down. Uh, so here's the second reaction. OC2H3O2 minus plus water. I want to know the equilibrium constant. I want to know K for that one. Okay? It gives you the first one. In fact, if I want to make this harder, I wouldn't have given you the first reaction. Okay? But it's here. So, what do you do? There's even a hint. I was feeling so joyful, I guess, here. Consider the ion product of water. That's this. So I probably want to consider it if it's in the hymn. This was not written, so you would have had to know this one. And this is KW, uh, given on the back of the exam. Okay, this is a Hess law style question in a multiple choice. And basically, I need to manipulate these two reactions where my fingers are uh, in order to get this overall reaction right here. So, what? Which reaction would I mess with? The, uh, the one on the very top or the one on the very bottom? Again, I'm trying to get, this is what I want to get to here. The bottom one, what am I going to do? I 
I, I'm kind of thinking I'll flip it so that I get the OH minus over here. So I'm going to flip this. I'll rewrite it just so it's easier to see. Uh, but you could do this in your head if you can imagine it. Oh, this should be H, I put 3 O, 2 O, H, 2 O. This is KW to the minus 1 now because I flipped it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do these two reactions add up to the circle one? Let's see, the H3O plus would cancel, right? One of the waters would cancel. Yep. Looks pretty good. So the K of the overall reaction right here is the, what do I do with these two K values here of the reactions I just added? I multiply them. So it would be Ka for acetic acid divided by Kw. Uh, number five, is that okay? Number six. Yes? Oh, you kind of asked about that earlier. We didn't get to it. Uh, let's go A plus B goes to C. Let's say they're all aqueous. Let's say this has a K, C value, okay? Uh, and let's say delta H is, you want endo or exo? <coughs> uh, nice, me too, okay? All right, let's say it's endothermic. Uh, so let's say I, let's all think about this. Uh, let's say I want to increase the temperature, okay? If I want to increase the temperature, First of all, endothermic, should I think of heat on the left or the right? Left, yeah, I put in heat. If I increase the temperature, which way will this shift? To the right. Okay, so equilibrium moves a little bit now. Uh, so the K value, so remember, one of the only things that's going to affect K is the temperature. Okay, so if equilibrium really, I'm using the word shift, but if equilibrium moves to the right now a little bit more, will K go up or down? Yeah, a little bit because there's more products now. So for endothermic reaction, increasing the temperature will cause a K to go up. So that means the right hand side is going to be a little bit more favored than it was before. Yes? It should be. So if I increase the temperature and was over here, let's think about it, it would shift left, and okay, it would go down, yeah. So you can, there's all kinds of ways. I could also decrease the temperature for it. There's four possibilities. Exothermic, increase temperature, decrease temperature. Endothermic, increase temperature, decrease temperature. So make sure you can think through all four of those. Okay. That, that for me, this would be a multiple choice level question here. Okay. Uh, what number was I just on? Five? Six? Okay, I'm gonna go seven. Yes. And I answered your question, right? Yeah, okay, seven. Okay, what test are you on? Spring 11, just give me a minute here. Number what? 16. This one right here? Okay, this is page 89. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. What is the pH? Oh, uh, we haven't got to store uh, titrations yet for this test, so save that for the final. Is there another question you had instead of that? Because I just pulled the rug out from under you. Oh, no, no, you're good. Just a general question. Okay. So, just to reverse, how do you know when you're using the table? The stoichiometric table? Okay. Uh, let's do in general first. You know, how do you know when you're going to do stoichiometry before uh, equilibrium, which would be ice table or henderson hasselbach or whatever? Okay, uh, first a zero on the unfavored side. Now, where have we seen that? Uh, we've seen it with buffer, so you add something to a buffer. That's one place we've seen it. Uh, we've seen it with am I a buffer? So I go through that mess when the strong is about half the concentration 
of the weak one. We, we have to do that too. Even though we don't get to the equilibrium, maybe just to get to the identification of buffer. You could see that on an equilibrium chapter question, potentially. You saw that in the homework. I think you asked me in office hours one time. Yeah. That happens, and the book does that uh, sometimes, and we will too more and more now that you've learned it. Uh, if you see equilibrium favors one side because you have a very large or very small K, so you know, okay, I'm the unfavored side, I need a zero. That would be the third scenario, and I think those would be the only three scenarios you would see that happen. Okay. Uh, you were seven? No, you were six. Oh, seven. Seven. Eight. Last person. Yes. Spring 16, give me a moment. Oh, page 68. Page 68, did you say number nine? Okay. Uh, a setup here? We set up the problem or do you have a specific question? Okay. So, we have four different salts. Okay. This kind of question is a very typical colligative properties question that you see a lot on exam two or finals. It, it can be written slightly differently, but it's, but it's of this size, style. You should see this also on other exams. Okay, so what you want to do is uh, write down all the salts. Got that one, you've got this one. Uh, what I would do is write them uh, from top to bottom. S R. Is my mic still on? <laughs> yeah, I feel quiet. I will talk louder. Can you write this? Uh, top to bottom. Okay, like that. Then, is it back? Oh, I don't know what's wrong. Okay, they have the same lot. So you want to think of this equation. Okay, you want to find the biggest delta T. So what I'm going to do is make a little table. I don't quite need all these columns, but you'll get the idea. T uh, two of these columns are going to be ridiculous. Okay, so can you see that M times K times I will be delta T? So the multiplication of these three will get to this one. Okay, now let's fill in the column. M here, same. What's the K value for all these? Will it be the same or different? Same, because they're all aqueous, so they'd all be for water. Remember, the K value also is for water. So it all depends on the I value. So this is kind of the thing. You just like, what's the I value is what the question is asking. This would be, run it through with me. First one? One. Nope. Two. Even though there's no metal, this is ionic. Remember, this is the one ion that kind of acts as a metal, sort of. Okay, we learned it in 2A, so it's the ammonium ion. This one? Four. Three. Three. K2, oxalate. This is potassium oxalate. There's two Ks and an oxalate ion. Okay? So it'd have to be this one. That's the winner. All right. Well, I think we're about at time. I hope you enjoyed the review session.